All right, guys. So I've got everything plugged up to my control cabinet. Ends up being quite a bit of wiring. One last thing I wanted to show you was the pigtail that I made up for the foot switch and the power draw bar and the low air pressure sensor. What I did was I came off the cannon plug here and then I took the wire and split it. These two leads here go out around the back side of the mill and they go over to my air pressure sensor. Uh, it's tied in right here and it's just two little wires and there's a an adjustment here to adjust it uh, for the correct air pressure. Now there are some that are pre-defined uh, for the air pressure but I wanted an adjustable one. Now this one will, the max air pressure for this one's 150 psi so that's where probably somewhere there around there is where I'm going to adjust it. The next thing I did is I spliced in these little jacks here. Now these jacks came from some LED lighting I had and what I'm going to do is this one's for the foot switch so now this goes down to my uh, foot pedal there to manually open and close the power draw bar and it's just going to now what it's going to do is just activate an input on Mach 3 and so what I did is I just put the other end of the plug like so so now that goes to my foot switch and then the same thing for this is the output going to my power draw bar I've got the same type situation and then now that will go out to my power draw bar to activate it alright so I've got everything connected I'm gonna slide this back up under the mill and then I'm gonna start working on Mach 3, making sure it's configured correctly, and uh, see if we can't get some movement out of the machine. Alright guys, here we are in Mach 3. I'm back inside here. We're going to go through the ports and pins, and then we'll go back out to the machine and try to do a tool change. So for the configuration on the ports and pins, uh, I did make a few changes. I will have this uh, profile available if you're interested in it and you're going to be running the Ethernet Smooth Stepper with the C25XP. Uh, port 2 is enabled here and I did change the kernel speed to 45,000 Hertz. Uh, the motor outputs are pretty much the same. I think I did have to reverse the directions here uh, and then I add, have the addition of the C-axis which is uh, step pin 1, direction pin 17. Uh, the input signals for the X, Y, Z home switches, as well as the C home. And then we have our inputs. We have input 1 and 2. This is for extend and retract of the ATC. We have input 4 for the low air pressure sensor. Our probe, of course. E-stop. And then also OEM trigger 1. OEM trigger 1 is used by the brain. Uh, this is to uh, for our foot switch. So every time the foot switch is pressed, we get this OEM trigger. And that is set up on port 2, pin 5. Uh, that's everything for our inputs. Uh, the output signals, we're using uh, output 3. output 5 and output 6. Output 3 is our flood coolant. This is port 2 pin 1. Output 5 is our slide extend and, and retract. This is port 3 pin 7. Output 6 is our power draw bar. Our safety charge pump here pin 2 and 17. Uh, excuse me, port 2, pin 17. I'm using this for uh, enabling the clear path servos. We have output 7, 8, and 9. These are our stack lights. They're port 3, pin 9, 14, and 16. And also output 16. 
Now output 16 is configured exactly like output 6, port 3, pin 8. Uh, this is used for the brain to whenever the foot press, uh, when the OEM trigger for the foot switch is received, it will output 16. That allows us to use the foot switch uh, to activate the power draw bar and output 6 is used in Mach 3 for the tool change macro to output the power uh, solenoid for the power draw bar. Uh, encoder MPGs, I didn't make any changes here. Spindle setup, we've got the relays disabled. I believe that's the same as it was for the original configuration. Not really any changes there. And meal options, no changes here. In the motor tuning, that's you know pretty much self-explanatory. You guys tune your motors. I didn't really change anything in there. I just uh, went with the same thing I had before. Uh, the general configuration, I've got C-axis is angular. Mach 3, when it starts up, it sets the feed rate to 6 inches per minute. I know you guys have probably ran into this in the past. And if you want to change that, simply just type in the feed rate you want for your initializing string here. And every time Mach 3 boots up, it will have this new feed rate. Uh, you can also check it here and it will uh, use the initializing string on any and all resets. And you can put whatever information you want here uh, for startup. Uh, with the new probing routines that are in this screen, I'm using feed rate of 50. And I'll explain that uh, when we get into probing. Uh, this debounce interval, I've got it set for 5,000. I'm not sure. I've been playing around with this, but this is currently, I just took this profile from my machine, so this is currently the way it's set up. Uh, you want to make sure that you have 360 rotation rollover checked and angular short rotation on G0. That way, if you're going from, say, slot 10 to 1 and it will just go it'll just move one slot instead of going uh, all the way around over here you want to make sure that you have tool selections persistent checked optional offset save checked uh, this will uh, prompt you to save the tool offsets when you exit also uh, persistent offsets and persistent DROs this is needed for all the data that we're storing in the screen for our tool change location and those sorts of parameters. Uh, homing and limits, I didn't change anything there. I did uh, put in the C-axis. I've got it set for the maximum of 360 degrees, the minimum of zero. And for the Geneva drive, I need to position the uh, the the cam 180 degrees out and so I've got an offset built in this way you don't have to worry about lining up your home sensor in any particular spot you can uh, just use an offset mine happens to be uh, almost 24 degrees there I uh, believe that's everything uh, now for the uh, Ethernet smooth stepper. I don't have this on my laptop to plug in for that, but I suggest that you go to the Warp 9 website and go to the documentation, and then they also have the getting started. And this will run through everything you need to do to configure your Ethernet smooth stepper, uh, maximize maximize the efficiency of your computer that you're using. I happen to be using a Windows Vista computer on my PC. Uh, I had did have to go in there and disable some features uh, so that I could maximize all the power for the Ethernet smooth stepper. I don't use that computer for anything else but running the machine so uh, I wanted to go in there and make sure that I optimize the for everything for the Ethernet smooth stepper. I also upgraded the memory because I was having a little bit of a jittering issue and that had to do with the 
data being stored and the kernel speed. So let's uh, take a look at that. So when you do get the plugins installed for the Ethernet Smooth Stepper, you'll go to Configure Plugins, and this is the main config plugin. Uh, originally, I had this controller frequency set for uh, 1 kilohertz, which stored about one second of data, and that was causing me to uh, have a little bit of jittering motion. I've currently got it set for 250 hertz, which gives me about four seconds of data. Now, I couldn't do this before because the memory in my computer uh, didn't allow enough storage for this data in the buffer, and I was getting a buffer data error. So that resolved that. Uh, everything else here is pretty much default the way it was originally on the plug-in. The only thing I really changed is this controller frequency and the feed hold controlled by mock. I think default, this is where it's at, and that's I just left it there. Uh, the next is the spindle THC and laser config plug-in. Uh, I just made sure that PWM was checked here and base 1000. Uh, the next plug-in is the data monitoring. I didn't make any changes here. This is the default configuration. Uh, the next is the homing config. Uh, I do have homing as single axis checked here, and I'm not using the Ethernet Smooth Stepper for homing. I'm using Mach 3, so I don't have that enabled. Uh, last is the backlash config plugin. I didn't make any changes here. This is just default values. I'm not using that. Uh, so that pretty much takes care of the setting up the ports and pins and also the Mach 3 configuration. So now let's go back out to the machine and we'll try to do a tool. Check. Okay guys, well you can see that I got my wiring completed. I smoke tested, everything went good. I did have a couple of issues with my spindle. Uh, one, I had to swap two leads on my three-phase motor to get it to turn the correct direction. And the second issue I had was my dip switches for USA International were wrong. I had to change those. But other than that, everything's functioning really good. Testing out the tool change screen set, macros, and the tool changer itself. A couple of interesting features that I wanted to kind of point out and we'll talk about these in another video with the screen set however I'm going to do a tool change here currently I have tool 1 in the spindle I'm going to change to tool number 6 which is not currently in the carousel inventory so what do you do when that situation happens so this is what I came up with so we're going to store we're going to store tool number 1 going to come back down. The screen is going to prompt me to please load tool number six. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to put tool six manually in the spindle. You can see it doesn't have the ATC function. Step on my foot pedal. It clamps it. Then I'm going to get a pop-up message that says press OK when clear. So I press OK and now the tool change is complete. Now what happens when the next tool change occurs, I'm going to do a tool change back to tool number, let's go with tool number 10 which is in position 6 so we can have the carousel rotate. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to say please remove tool number 6. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to take the tool out. I'm just using a foot pedal. I get a pop-up that says manual tool change requested. Press OK when clear. So I'm clear now. It's going to raise up, extend. It's going to rotate to tool number 10, which is in slot 6. It's going to go down, clamp it, retract, and now I can machine 
with tools that are in the carousel. This was something that I hadn't address hadn't had not addressed this previously, but it was something I thought about when I was building this new screen. And uh, you need to have a way to manually load and unload tools, even though they're not in your carousel. Uh, many of you, like me, have tool holders that aren't TTS, so I still want to be able to use these. And I'll probably use them for things like uh, uh, that I don't commonly use, like maybe drill bits or something um, that I don't, or specialty end mills, maybe a round, round bull nose end mill or something like that. All right, guys. Well, just a sneak peek of ATC in action. Just doing some preliminary testing. I don't think I don't think that the Geneva wheel is slow at all. It seems to uh, tool change seems to happen pretty quick, and I don't really have it uh, sped up as fast as I can. I've got delays built in for uh, it releasing and clamping the tool looks pretty good so far let's 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 uh we'll time a tool change here all right guys so let's just see how long it takes to do a tool change um i haven't quite tweaked everything i probably can speed it up but this is pretty conservative um feed rate the the thing that slows you down the most is of course you know lifting up and lowering uh carousel rotation and that sort of thing but let me see if I can do a tool change real quick we're going to be changing from tool 1 to tool 6 which is 180 degrees out so that'll be the longest tool change and uh, let me see if I can uh, start this and the timer at the same time all right here we go seconds it looks like I don't think I stopped it quite at the right time but around 13 seconds so that's not bad for the tool change just doing some testing I got to run through uh, quite a few tool changes to make sure I've got everything uh, worked out and everything's functioning correctly but you can see 13 seconds 13 and a half second tool change that's that's pretty good if you ask me in the next video I'll, I'm going to talk about the new screen set the macros and all the functions uh, within the macro and the screen uh, there's a lot going on there but there was a lot of things that I wanted to try to resolve how do you handle a manual tool change uh, if you don't have the 10 tools in the carousel you still need to be able to uh, load the tool when a tool change occurs so i think we've got that problem solved i'm excited to show you that in the next video guys if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in click on the subscribe button down here below that way when i post a new video if it's something you're interested in you can stop by and check it out as always guys please feel free to ask questions make suggestions or leave comments thumbs up if you like the video Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys, and most importantly, be safe.